What's going on everybody? Welcome to the 10th Monte Carlo video. In this video what we're going to be comparing is not only the bust rate but also the profit rate. So both strategies ta uh, stand to lose the same amount of money uh, if they lose but this is definitely not the case for gains. One strategy is certainly uh, better at, at making gains and then also life expectancy for the strategies is slightly different but it depends on what time frame you're looking at. On a short time frame life expectancy is far better with simple better but if you have a long time frame maybe not necessarily and certainly considering the cost versus benefits um, I would argue the double better is, is the superior method. So anyways with that let's go ahead and compare the two of these not only with going broke but also uh, profits. So <clears throat> initially we were using the same terminology for both of these was uh, you know broke count and um, doubler profits so or I mean broke count for both of these but now what I want to do is say doubler profits and then like doublers busts or something like that so uh, let's just get rid of broke count and let's say doubler underscore busts and then global uh, doubler underscore profits and then every time it goes here let's just copy and paste this doubler busts it adds one to doubler busts and where's the other one doubler busts okay so now the other thing that we want to know at the very end is uh, did we profit so right underneath uh, plt.plot we'll say if value is greater than funds so if the value is greater than the starting amount of money that we you know started with then we made a profit so that's good so we'll just say doubler underscore profits plus equals one <clears throat> and that's it now we'll take simpler better or simple better and again instead of broke count we're gonna call this uh, simple underscore busts and then we'll global another variable again both of these don't exist so don't be freaking out if you don't have them yet uh, simple underscore profits and then again where he goes bust will or where he goes broke count we're just gonna add this I'm pretty sure he only had one yeah and this is outside of this so we don't get confused okay and I think that's the only place we had it on simple. So anyway, then we'll do the same thing again. If value greater than fun. So again, if he has more money than he started with, simple underscore profits plus equals one. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we'll keep x equals zero. That's fine. And now we want to add in all of these variables so we've got simple underscore busts equals 0, 0 0.0 doubler underscore oops, double underscore busts equals 0, 0.0 uh, simple underscore profits equals 0, 0.0 and doubler underscore profits equals 0.0, 0. Okay, and then while x is less than sample size, we do want to run simple better now. Um, color, that's all good. I think we're all set in this. So now the next thing that we want to do is I'm just going to delete these and we'll keep the labels there. But now we want to print out the, um, the stuff that we find. So print, uh, and the first thing is going to be simple better bust chances colon and this is just gonna be um, simple underscore busts divided by sample size times 100.00 and then again print doubler better <clears throat> bus chance colon doubler underscore busts out of sample size times 100 and then now we want to know the profits so not only do we care you know does somebody go bust but we also care does somebody make a profit so uh, we want to do print oops simple better profit chances 
and this one is simple profits out of sample oops, sample size again times 100 so the next thing that we want is to print doubler better profit chances and doubler underscore profits over sample size times 100 and that should be everything the other thing that I like to add just for kicks is we'll add this plot dot a x h line we'll add it at the zero and we will color it red to signify you lose so that should be enough I'm gonna go ahead and delete this I don't foresee a time in the future when we'll plot us that one again alone I think we're good so let me change wager count to a thousand just so this comes up quicker and we'll even change sample size to a hundred just just for now so let's go ahead and run that and see if we get any errors we do not and so we come over here and here's our obviously our chart that we get um, and then the next thing is uh, so we can see how you know good people did so simple better bus chances zero not a single simple better lost money so that's cool um, double or better bust chance, 87% chance of going bust. Um, so very high percent chance of going bust. Simple better profit chances, 33%. Double or better profit chances, 13%. So across the board, um, with a thousand wagers, we can see that actually the double or better is the better, better based on these uh, rules. But if you look at who, act, you know, what kind of profit are we talking, right now we're just asking about profit. The next question is, of the people who profit, what multiple of their starting amount is the typical profit? Because we can see some people here are ending quite high, 40, 50, 60, 70, well, no one's 70, but about 60,000 is the highest. So obviously you stand to gain a lot more with a doubler. Um, so the next thing that we'd want to do <clears throat> is check, um, we'll add some more wagers to the, actually let's do a shorter amount of wagers first. So let's run this, we're only doing 100 wagers, and we can see here quite a few of these guys drop off, that's pretty funny. Um, so again, simple betters, chances of going bust, the none. Doubler better's chance of going bust is 30% chance of going bust. And then of the 31%, if you didn't go bust, how likely is it that you profited if you were a doubler? Well, 61%, which I think is pretty cool. So it's if you don't lose, you did darn well. Um, whereas with simple better, it only makes sense too since you're doubling up, right? With doubler better, or simple better, you only still only have a 40% chance of profiting, or well, 39% chance of actually making a profit so you know that better um, I just don't know what the point of making that better is but you can see already with a, a even a, only a hundred wagers so you thought you had 49 percent almost 50 percent odds you would expect that um, at least initially you might think well I stand a 50 50 chance of profiting but you don't because each wager is knocking against you so you can already see here that actually you only stand a 39% chance, not even 40. <laughs> Keep wanting to say 40 there. So anyway, pretty interesting. Now let's add, uh, let's do one more. Let's make the sample size a little bit larger so it's representative. And we're going to do 10,000 wagers. So let's go ahead and run that one. Should come up pretty quick. Um, be different if we made a larger sample size. Um, so our simple better has an 84% chance of going bust. Our doubler has a 98% chance of going bust. Um, <laughs> but here we can see if you didn't, if you were a double better and you didn't go bust, you made profit. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, oh, hold on. I'm refusing to believe this. Simple better profit chances, 85%. I can see this visually is incorrect. Uh, what have we done? <clears throat> uh, 
Now that's going to throw off everything now. Uh, this one seemed about right, but this is definitely... How could you possibly profit... better profit chances. Well, one thing is... Value equals zero there. And I'm not really sure why that is that. We sure can't be putting in broke there. Um. <laughs> uh, let's see, value equals zero. I'm just so confused at how we could actually have 80 cents. <laughs> it's so obvious that that's incorrect. So I'm very angry. Sample size will go back to 100 and 1,000 there. Could have possibly just been the fact that we were putting in broke, which is not like a valid digit. Profit chances 24. Two thirteen. Okay, um, that should do it. So. Uh, hopefully that was the only issue. I don't really, we're not doing like complex math here, so I'm a little concerned. But I, I think it was possibly just the fact that we made value. Um, yeah, we set value to equal something. That's exactly, I think, what we've done. Because we set value up here to equal uh, broke, which wasn't even a digit. And then you at, we were asking, is value greater than funds? And maybe it was saying that it was greater than funds because it wasn't even like a valid number. I don't know. Anyway, um, these are a little bit better numbers anyway. Simple better profit chances, 26%. That's a little bit more in line with what I was expecting. So let me go back up here. I'll pause it again. I just want to run it. We'll run 10,000 samples with 10,000, or I guess 1,000 with 10,000 wagers. Let's see if we get what we expect again. I'll pause it while this runs. All right, so this is a little bit better. <laughs> this is what I was expecting. So the chances of going bust, 84%. Doubler betters, bust chance, 99.4%. Um, and then if you didn't go bust, you made a profit, again, as the doubler. Uh, simple better profit chance, 1.6. So that's more in line, not an 80% chance. <laughs> so that's good. I'm glad we saw that. Um <laughs> we can see this guy went under again. Um, anyway, that's okay. I'm not too focused on the simple better anyways. He's more of a control variable for us, so um, so that's okay. We'll just stick with that. So now the next things that I really want to do are um, get to what we've been talking about, and that is it, how successful is the double better? Is that the best strategy to use? If it is the best strategy to use, how many wagers should you use? And in direct correlation to wagers or in um, direct relation to the number of wagers, I'm going to go ahead and just say it. logically I know that the amount of wagers that you do and also the size of your entire purse starting um, plays a huge crucial role. I know it plays a role, I just don't know what exact what the exact role is. And so that's the, that's the most important thing that we're trying to find now because with Simple Better, the chances of actually profiting um, you have a chance of profiting, but the actual profit that you make is pretty minuscule as compared to the profit that you would make as the double better. And so the double better, most likely, at a wager size of, say, 100, uh, is going to be one of the better choices. Let me make sure I closed out the plot, yeah. <clears throat> because you stand to gain much more. And so it might be the case that, um, so here we go right here, double better profit chances, you have a 66% chance of profiting. Whereas the simple better, even though he won't go bust, he only has a 
percent chance of profiting. And we can already see as the with the doubler better, he didn't actually dealt. I mean, a few guys got close, but he made good profits. Whereas our simple better maybe made twenty percent, right? So we didn't really make that much money, but our doubler, if you did profit, you made pretty darn good money. Um, since we were kind of up in this area. And then obviously we have a lot of losers that dropped off here. Um, but your bust chance is only 30%. And so of that 30%, your 66% chance to profit. So say you had 100 grand, you would just start with 10,000 each time. You would bet as a double or better and just play out 100 wagers or, and, or bust. And at the end of 100 wagers, you'd start over. Say I've got 10 grand, I'm gonna do another 100 wagers. And on a long-term scale, you might actually make a profit. We're going to answer all of these questions, and we're also going to be looking for the correct answer of how much should our starting wager be in percentage to our um, full funds? How many wagers should we do? Maybe the maybe the ideal wager number is 80 or 82. Um, and then also, what's the multiple? So right now we're multiplying by two, but it might be something else. So that's what we're going to be working on in the next videos. We're going to make a uh, a double or better but basically we're gonna make all of these things variable so first we're just gonna do the multiple we're gonna try and uh, make one variable first and then as time goes on we're gonna make it uh, switch up all of these variables like um, how big of a wager size to start with how many wagers to do all of that probably the last one we do is how many wagers to do so first we'll, we'll vary uh, and we'll add the variable for the multiple then we'll do um, the starting size probably and then we'll do wager count at the very end and each time what we'll use the Monte Carlo simulator to do is just run through all of these examples over and over and over and over and over find one that's successful test it like about a thousand times to make sure it's actually successful and then we've got an answer so that's what you guys have to look forward to hopefully you guys are enjoying I'm kind of enjoying it it's a lot of fun to like look through all of these examples so anyway I'm having a good time so anyway, that's what you guys have to look forward to. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.